folks, here we go. Uh, we've moved on to our winner's match of the group stage here between Daniel and Atlas. The winner of this ensures their uh, ability to move on in this tournament, while the loser of this still has one more chance to uh, clinch that second spot in the um, in the game here. Um, we are now joined uh, by everybody's favorite six-sided friend. Cube is here with us, going to provide a little bit of insi insight into the uh, Protoss play. Uh, Cube, why don't you go ahead and give us some introductions to the players? Um, I'm not rooting for the Protoss this game. I'm sorry to everyone, but I have to keep my Canadian, my Canadian roots out. So I'm going for the top left spawning teal player. Infinity Gaming's Terran player, Atlas, Ian, let's go. And in the bottom right, we have a great mentor, also a great player, Daniel. He's been, uh, he's been working me and Dark Lorux at it for the past few weeks in our PvZ. It's been quite fun. Yeah, and so prior to this game, we had uh, both Atlas and Daniel here to do vetoes, and I don't know if that conversation was broadcast, but I decided that I would sweeten the um, sweeten the pot here a little bit for these two players, and so there is a, a five dollar incentive for Atlas for every successful nuke landed in this game, he will earn himself five dollars out of my pocket. On the other hand, uh, Daniel has the incentive of $5 for every kill from a mothership. Not a mothership core, every kill from a mothership. So it'll be interesting to see if any of these players take my offer. Um, my guess is that Atlas probably might, and Daniel is very rigid in his play, so my guess is that he probably won't. But I want to see nukes and motherships, and I'm sure that would make for an entertaining game. So the incentive is there. Let's see if the player is... Uh, Follow in on it. Alright, so, looks like we have a gateway expanded out of Daniel. What's going on up in Atlas' space cube? Um, it does look just like it's gonna be a Reaper opening from our Terran player. And then he pulls right out of gas, and then he's gonna save 100 for a factory. And before that, I think he should throw down a reactor. Yeah, we've got the engineering block uh, here. That's going to keep Daniel from uh, getting any sort of fast expansions. Um, right now, I think Daniel's going to need a lot more gas if he's going to rush to that uh, mothership there. Probably um, not going to see that anytime soon. Daniel's opener is showing that he's not going to proxy any strategy. There's not going to be any cheesy BS, as some people call it, Protoss Imba stuff. We're not going to see any of that because there's no second gas. And the reason we know that he's not going to take a second gas too early is because he put three probes into that gas. Yeah, Reaper making his way into Daniel's base, uh, taking a few pecks at that Zealot. Uh, now going to try to see if he can snipe. Going to be careful here. Stalker on the field. Probes get a few shots off. This Reaper's probably going to be able to get away. That's a big jump off that cliff. Going to need to find a smaller uh, hop there. And away he goes. Gonna go heal himself up and uh, go hop around a little bit more. Stalker moved down to clear out this engineering bay. So Atlas did not let it finish, but I'd rather have him keep building it right until almost the end and then stop there. Oh, looks like we have the famous Atlas flag coming along, and it does look like our Terran player is expanding with that bunker. Yeah, Bunker has gone down in the front. Uh, Reaper has come back to offer some moral support for this SCV building away. Uh, they're becoming fast friends as the uh, CC goes first. Robo going down on the other side of the map for uh, Daniel. So he's uh, chosen to get the Robo here before any additional gateways. A mothership core is also on the way, and Daniel is now dropping his expansion. Yeah. It looks like Alex is going to grab a few more racks and keep his economy flowing. He's going to stay on one gas. And I'm not too sure about what Daniel's going to be doing, but if he throws it onto assimilators quickly, I'm pretty sure he's going to go into the Archon, which beat Bomber on the WCS this past weekend. Yep, Daniel opting to get up some fast observers here to get some great scouting information on what Atlas is doing and then uh, adjust his comp composition accordingly. Zealot waiting for this Reaper gets uh, one shot off. Stalker gonna come in here. 
Atlas does not get any information that he needs right now. He sees an observer, he sees a robo, but he's not seeing the forge. He did not click on that building, so he does not know what it is. Does he know if it's a gateway, if it's a forge, if it's a twilight council, he does not know. But it does look like both of them are going to get their economy up. Maybe playing yep. a macro game. Yeah, it looks like they're gearing up for a macro game, even though uh, both Combat Shield and Stim started about the same time. Um, is that typically indicative of some sort of two base uh, push here with both these upgrades coming simultaneously on two different tech labs? I don't know. I think uh, there's a famous Pult Stim Shield push, but I'm not too sure about that. Stim and Combat Shield push. I'm not too sure about that, but De but Atlas really favored that. I was practicing with him as I got coaching a few weeks ago, a few days ago, and he was playing that type of style in his PVT. Yep, Twilight Council coming down uh, for Daniel. Um, my guess is we're going to be seeing a Zealot charge out of this, and uh, Daniel probably making his way to uh, High Templar in the uh, not-so-distant future here once he gets his uh, two-base economy rolling. Atlas and on the other side, uh, Marine Marauder heavy at the moment. In my opinion, I would have went for the blink instead of the Zealot charge, just because it rolls way better with the Colossus tech. Um, if you want charge, I'd rather prefer him to throw down a Templar Archives, which he's not doing. Um, yep, we see charges is, is the choice here. Yep. Um, the next tech building that Daniel throws down will be the biggest giveaway what will happen. But Daniel does see his whole, all of Atlas's army composition that he's moving out. Yeah, Atlas, Atlas down. chasing down the Observer here. Observer manages to skirt away from the scan. Scan going down in the natural to check out the uh, army composition of Daniel. Doesn't see too much, just the sentry, three stalkers, and two zealots there. Mothership core watching over everything. Hopefully gonna see this become a mothership at some point in this game. However, um, I'm a little bit doubtful of that. Warp prism here for uh, Daniel. Interesting. I think he's gonna do storm drops. Um, because he's getting his Templar Archives, that's the reason why I think he picked up the charge. I had plus, I mean, plus one armor just finished for Daniel. I think he should start plus one attack. And we should see Storm coming down very soon. Yeah, seeing nothing at the front here, uh, Atlas has decided to uh, get an aggressive stance. Gets force fielded out of the uh, main there. Good force field by Daniel. Photon overcharge does go down here. Um, immediately warping in uh, some more zealots here to help tank for the rest of this storm research starting. These marauders a little bit out of position. Uh, the rest of the bio hacking away. He does manage to sneak up. Oh, the force field not quite perfect. Holding everything off. All the bio gets into the main. Nice little choke there. Everything manages to squeeze through. Stalker's a little bit too fat there. Force field goes down and everything gets mopped up in a bloody mess. So Daniel does lose his Templar archive. It's a big blow of investment into minerals. He does not have Storm, not Templar useless. He can only use feedbacks. But uh, I feel like Atlas is a bit behind here. He's supposed to have Medivax out around. 10 minutes, it's coming in at around 12. He doesn't have that many racks, but he's got double upgrades coming in. And I think he should be gearing up to throw down an armory. And it looks like we got a third coming down for both players. Yeah, it looks like uh, Daniel, in anticipation of the third from Atlas, has uh, moved around. Warp Prism here, uh, poking in and out. He's got one Zealot in it. Zealot gets dropped on the high ground. Warp Prism moving back to the low ground. Um, whole bunch of zealots sitting there at the third it would be a great opportunity for them to move in maybe do some damage to that bunker zealot um having a little bit of a field day here in the um in the mineral line gets uh gets an scv kill before he is cleaned up um uh, not sure if these uh zealots are mis rallied for daniel that they were supposed to be part of that that poke or whether they're just waiting for this command center to uh move over and be dropped but right now they are fresh for the picking if atlas sees them um, apparently he does not, though, um, as he starts to hack away at these rocks. These marines are within shooting distance of the zealots, but unfortunately, um, yeah, we don't have an engagement there. Daniel's gearing up for his double forge upgrades, so he can catch up to Atlas. 
Yep, skimming uh, into these uh, zealots, concussive shells doing their work, slowing that one zealot down to a glacial pace as the others uh, try for the speed record to try to get away here, merging up with the rest of the Protoss army. We may see a little bit of an engagement here, Cube. Yeah, Atlas just safely stems away, and it looks like Daniel's gonna gear up for a push here. He should have Storm in a bit. Yep, Storm it's just, just now finishing, right now. yep. I'd like to see a uh, plus two armor come down as of now, and he's warping in more zealots and temple arm. Daniel might be a little bit greedy and take his fourth expansion a bit earlier because he does have the minerals. He does need to throw down a few more gateways and morph these in in his main. Yeah, meanwhile, a drop heading out here for Atlas. He's got four Marauders in there. Um, the whole army of Daniel is here, but of course he does have the uh, fully charged Mothership core um, able to recall if he needs to. I think this uh, Marauder drop, we're going to have to follow that closely just to make sure. I'll stay uh, I'll stay here at the uh, front and see if there's any action there. If somebody wants to follow the Mothership, Mothership or um, the dropship chooses to uh, head back. Um, maybe he saw that he was scouted, or he saw this push and knows great big storm, storm landing Daniel. there, getting all of the units here, everything moving in, SCVs are Pulling pulled out, SCVs. storms on all of the SCVs, all of the SCVs will go down, and GG from out. Atlas, great storms by Daniel, taking game one, as they say, by storm.